Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome to hopefully what will be another reading vlog. It has been a few months since I've last filmed something, since I last posted something. I think this might be the longest break I've taken from booktube. However, I really want to get back into it before December, before like the holiday season, um, because obviously I have all these like year end videos planned and I want to like get back into the swing of things. So I thought what better way than to do another reading vlog? Not that I've been reading much, but I have been reading a couple of things. So let me like introduce you to them now. I feel like I do have a lot of reading time today, honestly, because my internet is down. I don't have any internet and it is currently just before 11 a.m. and I am supposed to be working but I have exhausted all the non-internet-y things that I can do um, at work and like you might be asking Tammy why don't you go into the office and you'd be right I could go into the office but like do I want to? No. No, I do not. Anyway, <laughs> what I am reading this week. First things first, fantasy has not really been happening for me recently but I did want to finish off this trilogy. This is Into the Dying Light, which is book three in the... What is this trilogy called? I really don't know. The first book is There Will Come a Darkness. The second book is As the Shadow Rises or something. I don't know. I read those two earlier this year, like in pretty close succession, and I really, really enjoyed them. I did enjoy book one more than book two, but I'm still like very invested in this story and I want to see how it all ends and so obviously I picked up book three for myself and I'm just really looking forward to finishing this. This is, in my opinion, like a very underrated series. I know I haven't finished the series, but I think this is a very underrated YA fantasy series here on booktube and on the bookish internet in general. Like I don't feel like there's a lot of hype for this series. I don't hear a lot of people talking about it. Honestly, like I think if you like multi POV stories, if you enjoy YA fantasy, like I feel like it takes a lot of like classic tropes and it just executes them very well. Like there's nothing about this series I feel so far that has been like groundbreaking or like, um, you know, like, super out of the box or anything but what it does is that it just executes everything really well in my opinion like all the POVs I really quite enjoy there's only one POV that I don't really like and it's Hassan's and he's kind of like this prince character um that being said he's not like a huge character like he's not like the biggest POV I believe I vlogged when I first read the first one so I'll link it up above so that you can see that and like get a summary of it because it is a little convoluted I won't lie to you like the plot is quite convoluted because there's all these like different storylines but what I do think this series does really well is in both of the first and second books um the plot lines like when they come together at the end they come together so satisfyingly and like again it's not anything that's like unpredictable like in in fact I do think it is a little predictable but at the same time like it's predictable in like a satisfying way and again I just think that this is like a very solidly executed, solidly paced YA fantasy and I just think that like it deserves more hype in my opinion. The other book that I'm reading right now is a romance on Kindle Unlimited called Outdrawn I believe and I don't remember the author's name but I will put a picture obviously up here. Um, this is a sapphic rivals to lovers romance which obviously was like right up my alley. Kindle like recommended to me a few weeks ago and it only just came out like I think last week um, but it recommended it to me and so I've been waiting for it to come out and then when it came out I started reading it and I was enjoying it but to be quite honest with you I'm over halfway through now and I'm a little like I don't know like I just feel like the character interactions are not that enjoyable. Let me backtrack. Let me give you a summary. Basically, it's all obviously about these two women and they're both comic artists. And what you need to know about them is that they both post to this kind of like website that is basically like um, webtoons adjacent. Um, and they're like competitors on there. Um, they also overlapped together during art school. So they knew each other during art school. Um, they weren't in the same year, but they overlapped and they had a couple of classes together. So they have a history together. However, after graduation, Sage, she like very quickly um, got a job, became like quite famous and is like top of the charts on this like webtoons website. I can't remember what they call it in the book. She is like obviously very, very successful. And Noah, the other main character, she's taken more time to get there. Her webcomic is like just starting to get popular. Um, and she finally lands a job at this comic company, the same one that Sage works at. And she ends up on the same team as Sage at work. 
And so that's kind of how they meet again at this point in time in their lives. Um, and that's like the setup of the book. Um, I really enjoy Noah as a character. I really, really like Noah. I think that she is so likable. She is so, such a little darling. Like, I really like her. I really like her storyline. I, in general, like, I have a soft spot for, like, characters who take longer to, like, reach their goals and like that kind of struggle. She has like a bit of an inferiority complex a little bit about her career trajectory, especially in comparison to Sages who like basically like immediately graduated and became like this comic hotshot, right? Whereas Noah took like more time to get there. She's, you know, not being as successful straight off the bat. She's put in a lot of work to get to where she is today, but she like anticipated being more successful at this point in her life, right? And so like, I have a very soft spot for characters like that. I, I relate to them a lot and I just really like her as a character. Sage on the other hand, I don't, I don't enjoy Sage as a character. She's, it's not just that like, she's really successful, whatever. But the first half of the book, I guess in order to like set up this whole like rivals dynamic, Sage is a bit of a bitch, to be quite honest with you. It's not even just that, like, she's a bitch, because I am known to like a bitchy character. Um, she's mean. Like, she's genuinely just, like, really mean. And it's not even just that she's rude. She genuinely just says things to be mean and to hurt people and to hurt Noah. And I just don't like it. And, like, obviously, I know it's just a book. It's not that deep, whatever. But, like, it's not a dynamic that I enjoy very much. It's not even, like a teasing gone overboard kind of thing. Like she genuinely is just mean to Noah and I don't like it. And she's like mean to other people in the book that she works with. And I just, I don't like it. I do feel like there are moments where the author is trying to endear you to Sage, but at like approximately 60% of the way through the book now, I don't feel like there's been enough done to like counteract the meanness of this character for my personal liking. And also I feel like the relationship went from like rivals. They don't really talk to each other. They're not even like really, you know, friends at all. And then all of a sudden they're like making out. And I'm just like, I need, I need more of a progression. I feel like for me, rivals to lovers, like I feel like there needs to be a pit stop in the friends territory. Like I feel like you can't go from like rivals. We don't speak to each other. We don't really like each other. All of a sudden we're making out. Like I don't, I just, I need a little bit more. I need a little like more progression, especially because this is not a short book. Um, I feel like I've been reading forever. And uh, again, I'm only 60% of the way through it. So I'm like, in this time, could we not have had a little bit more development for these characters? Like, I don't know. Anyway, I am going to continue reading it till the end, I think, because like I said, I do really like Noah. I really like her as a character. And I do want to see this kind of like through to the end. Hopefully it gets better. Hopefully Sage grows on me. But as of right now, like I'm just not I'm not feeling this book. And I feel like I'm disappointed because I think in my head I was like, this is this is the romance for me. You know what I mean? Like a sapphic rivals to lovers contemporary about artists love it. Um, but unfortunately, one of the main characters is just not for me and you know, whatever. Anyway, I'm gonna like, I guess, read or do something. I don't know, like I, I feel bad because I feel like I should be working, but like I genuinely just like can't work right now. But also I might start a, an audiobook because recently I haven't really been doing audiobooks, but I have been listening to a lot of podcasts, but obviously because I don't have internet um, and I don't wanna use up my data like all at once. Um, I'm not going to be like loading a podcast to listen to. So maybe I'll pop on an audiobook. Um, what I do want to do is my pill box that I <laughs> have acquired. I don't know if I've shown my other one, but usually I have like a rainbow one. But I was at my parents this weekend and my dad wanted a bigger pill box and my pill box was bigger and his was smaller. So we swapped pill boxes because, you know, father daughter bonding, whatever. Um, so I now have this pill box and it's fucking ugly in my opinion. And so I have like these stickers. So I think I'm going to like try and like, I don't know, do something with it and decorate it somehow. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but yeah, anyway. I will see if I have an audiobook downloaded already and I will keep you posted and let you know. Um, but yeah, that's it for this check-in and I will check in later. Good morning, friends. Happy Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? I think it's Tuesday. Oh my God. First things first. I know that this is almost finished, but I've been making my own ice white mochas recently. Um, I've gotten quite into the coffee making. Um, I bought myself a, what's it called? A mocha pot and then I became obsessed with like making coffees but before that even when I was using my Nespresso I was just using like this vanilla syrup that I have but then I was like 
let me try making ice white mochas because I don't know. I just like suddenly had a craving for it. I think it's like the winter. The winter makes me crave white chocolate for some reason. Anyway, obsessed, obsessed. They're so good. Anyway, um, actual reading updates. Um, first things first, I did decide to DNF Outdrawn. I read, I think one more chapter and I was just like, I can't stand the 180. Like I, I just feel like if it's rivals to lovers, it cannot go from like, we are coworkers to we are making out. Like, where is the development? And also like, the thing that bothers me the most is that it took 50% of the book to get to the point where they're making out. But at the same time, in that 50%, like, they have barely really like interacted outside of work or anything. Like they really are just coworkers. And even as coworkers, it's mostly just like one of them being really rude to the other one. Like they've not really had that many like conversations. And I just like, I don't, I don't buy it. Like I don't buy their relationship. It's just the chemistry is not there for me. And I'm just so disappointed because I feel like on paper, this is like so my kind of like contemporary romance. And unfortunately it just was not it for me. And I do want to check out this author's other works because they are all on Kindle Unlimited. So I might as well check them out. But I don't think she has more sapphic romances, which makes me a little sad. This is like her first sapphic one. Um, so, yeah, disappointing. I feel like sapphic contemporary romances have not been hits for me. Like Alexandria Belfler really is the exception for me when it comes to contemporary sapphic romances. Um, and I don't like that. I want that to change. But I just feel like a lot of the popular ones I don't like. Like I didn't like Delilah Green. I hated it, in fact. That being said, I do have the third book in that series, um, from Libro FM. So maybe I'll check it out. I don't know. Anyway, speaking of audiobooks, I have had in the background, um, the audiobook for Son of the Storm by Sugi Davies Okumboa. Um, this is obviously a reread for me. I'll link up above whatever video where I talk about this. I think I vlogged it when I read it. It must have been like two years ago now, I feel like, because this came out in 20... 21, I think. And I read it like when it came out. Um, I think this was like the first book that Orbit ever sent me and I was just like so excited to read it. And I really, really enjoyed it at the time. I think I gave it four stars. Um, on reread, I don't know if I'm going to change my rating. It might be like a 4.25. It's just not quite at the 4.5 rounded up to a five star yet. Um, because I do think that the second half of the book, once we start getting like more POVs, I start like caring less about some of the other POVs. Um, and so it's not like as strong as like the first half of the book, I think, but I do really like it. I also really recommend the audiobook. I really enjoy the audiobook narrator. Um, again, one of those very few like male narrators that I really like. I think thematically, like it's so interesting and so relevant, even though obviously it's like a fantasy world, but it's about like identity and like immigration and oppression. And like, I just, I don't know how to put it into words. I need to like think about it a little bit more, but I'm really, really enjoying it. Basically, second book is coming out today. Warrior of the Wind is coming out today. It's out today. What am I saying? It's already out. However, for once in my entire life, um, the author is coming to Toronto for a book launch. And so I'm actually going to go tonight. I think, um, unless something comes up or like my back starts hurting drastically, which honestly has happened in the last few weeks. I, d I don't know if I mentioned this, but I sprained my hip a few weeks ago and by I sprained my hip. I mean, I woke up and my hip was sprained and I couldn't walk. Um, so anyway, unless something like that happens, I will be going to the book launch tonight. I'm very excited. It's going to be at Baca Phoenix, which is like the SFF bookstore in Toronto. If you've never checked it out, you definitely should. I really like them. Um, but yeah, he's going to be there for a book signing and a um, reading, I think. But I'm very excited. I'm going to go get the new book. I'm going to bring this one and hope that I'm allowed to get it signed as well because I would love um, to get it signed. But the point is, I forgot that I had started the reread on audio and I was about 40% of the way through it. I am now, I think, like a few chapters from the end. Like I think I'm like 80% of the way through it at least. Um, and so I'm going to finish that today before I go to the book signing so that I have the new book and then I'm ready for the new book. I really like the series. I, I do have to say, Donso, the main character, fucking annoying. Um, 
<laughs> and like he's supposed to be like I it, like he is a very flawed main character and he's a very well written character and I think that's why he irks me so much but I think on like first read I didn't realize like just how annoying he was until maybe like a little bit later in the book when kind of his flaws started showing like about 100 pages in um but on reread because like I already have this like notion in my head that he's like an annoying little bitch um He's been annoying from start to finish. And so, like, I'm just like, wow, what a little weenie. Like, I fucking hate him. Um, but again, like, not in a bad way because, like, I think he's very well written. He's just so irksome. He's kind of one of those, like, painfully naive, like, weaponized ignorance kind of people. And, like, I just, he irks me. Um, I really like Li Long. And I really hope we get more of her in book two. Um, obviously, we do get quite a bit of her in book one as well. But I really, really like her. I really want more of her. And I think during my first read, I was just so blinded by my love for Ashemi, which I still love Ashemi. She's perfect. Um, but I was so blinded by my love for her that I just didn't realize how much I love Li Long as well. And I really, really love her on reread. I think she is really like rose up to be I think my favorite character in the book and I'm just really really excited to continue on in the series but anyway I've babbled on long enough about that um hopefully I will take you along with me tonight um I also read a little bit of Into the Dying Light uh, by Katie Rosepool maybe like one or two chapters and I'm still really enjoying it one thing about the third book that the first and second book didn't have is that there are like flashback snippets um to kind of like the far far past like if you don't know what the story is about I'm not going to go into it here because there's so many like different plot lines but one of the things is that there's like a prophecy involved and that's kind of like the main setup of book one and two um but basically um by the time we get to book three the prophecy has like mostly manifested at this point but what you need to know about this world is that there used to be in the past like these seven prophets and they basically like left the land and when they left they left behind this prophecy um and so in this book we are actually getting some flashbacks to like the prophet's time which i think is super interesting and it's nice to like see that group of seven versus like our current group of I don't know how many there are I haven't counted but like it's nice to see potentially like if there's any parallels between like the two time periods and like the two groups of like young people you know what I mean um anyway I'm going to continue reading that I am going to finish Son of the Storm again anyway that is it for this check-in and I will see you later When, whenever people ask me what the three books are about, I tell them that the first book introduces us to the world, the second book breaks the world, and the third book tries to imagine what the world will look like going forward. So this is the book that breaks the world. Hello friends, happy Friday. I don't actually have any reading updates because I actually have not read anything since Tuesday, I guess, is when I checked in. Um, but it is Friday, so I feel like I should check in. I also figured I should probably give, like, a quick little update, let you know how, like, the book signing was. Long story short, it was really fun. Um, it was a very small group. They were, like, the people at the bookstore was like, we were so worried no one would show up. Um, so it was kind of a shame because it was such a small turnout, but it was, like, a small indie bookstore, um, and it was raining. And so I think all things considered, there were still around like 10-ish people there. So it was nice. It was like very intimate and people got to ask questions. So it like felt really nice. And then, and I really enjoyed hearing uh, Suyi Davies of Kumboa speak, especially when he talks about like his process in terms of like creating his worlds and characters. And I feel like it just kind of confirmed how I felt about the book and like why I like these characters and this world so much and I feel like the way that he approaches characters is very similar to like how I like to perceive my characters in books if that makes sense like he talks a lot about how he builds from the world up so he builds a world and then situates characters within that world and he thinks a lot about how this person would operate and move in specifically the world that he's created rather than I do feel like sometimes you get authors who craft 
half the character and then a world around them. And I think for me, that just doesn't work as well as something like this, where the character feels so grounded in their world. And I just like feeling like these characters are moving within spaces that are realistic to them. And it's like consistent across the characters. And I do feel like um, he does that really, really well in his book, if that makes sense. And then hearing him speak and like knowing that that is actually how he approaches his characters and his world building, like just, it just felt very like, yes, I knew I liked you for a reason. Um, but I did get both my books signed. He was really nice. I obviously bought book two while I was there. And then he kindly signed my first book too, which is so funny though, actually, because like I <laughs> gave it to him and I have like a few tabs and then it's like very yellowed. And he's like, what happened to your book? And I was like... I'm so sorry. I did not mean to like damage your book. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then we were kind of chatting because I, when I wrote the reviews, like when I was still, you know, being quite diligent about my content warnings for my reviews and stuff. And so he was asking me about the content warnings. Cause he was like, Oh, you like actually did that. And then he mentioned that in the second book, he noticed in some reviews that people were putting content warnings. And so he actually added content warnings um, in the second book, which I personally like really appreciate. I like that. I know that there are some authors who are like anti content warnings. Um, but I do like that he like saw that 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 was like a thing that people wanted, and then added it. And I think that that's like a really nice thing to see like authors taking that kind of stuff on board. He did sign my books, obviously, I also got they had some extra like pre-order artwork so there's this little like postcard with our three main characters and then I got a bookmark I did get done so even though I don't like him as a character I think he's a little bitch but he looks good so I love it it's beautiful but I'm very excited to read this he did like a reading from it and I am very excited one of the things that I don't think I remembered on my first read I think my first read through I was just like very enamored with the world and I really enjoyed the characters and like the themes that I kind of miss the fact that there are these like really fun like monsters in the book and in the first book it's a monster called a scopey which is kind of like a giant lightning bat type of thing I guess sort of um and so he read a passage from here because he was saying like people wrote to him saying that they really like monsters and they want more monsters. And so they made more monsters in the second book. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I'll start this right away because I do kind of want to um, hybrid read this um, because I have really enjoyed the audiobook for Son of the Storm. And so I'm going to try and see if the library will get me the audiobook for this. And if not, I'll just buy it. But other than that, I've really not been reading because work has been kicking my ass and I had a stupid fucking all day meeting yesterday in person and I met one of the most irritating people I've ever met in my life and I immediately hated him and I had to sit in a room and listen to him talk for the entire fucking day and so that just like emotionally drained me and I also because it's Black Friday have bought a couple of new games unsurprisingly and so I don't know how much reading I'm gonna get done but I will check in with you once I have more updates might be a few days from now might be a week from now who knows um but I will check in when I actually have updates good morning friends it is Wednesday I got my pumpkin spice latte <sighs> so needed um reading updates I've actually been audiobooking for the last couple of days which is like not been very common for me this year. I think I've like read very few audiobooks this year compared to like previous years. Um, but first things first, I did actually finally read Jade Shards by Fonda Lee. This is her, I guess, short story collection that takes place in the Greenbone Saga world. Um, there's only four short stories. It's like very, very short. Um, and it's basically just revisiting some of the characters that we know from the main series, but revisiting them in the past before the beginning of the first book. And I definitely say you should have probably read the entire series before you read this one. I don't know. Maybe at least the first book, but I would say you would get more out of it if you've read the entire series. But I think that it won't spoil you for books like two or three or anything like that. Um, but I really enjoyed this. I really, really enjoyed this more so than I did the Jade Setter of Jan Loon, which is like the spinoff um, novella that takes place in the same world. 
and I really like this. I gave it four stars in the end because I really love three out of the four stories. And then one of the four stories is Hilo story. And like, if you know anything about me, it's that like, I am not a Hilo stan. I know that a lot of people on the internet are Hilo stans. And it's not that I dislike Hilo in the sense that like, I think he's a bad character. Like, I think he's an extremely well-written character. But I feel like the purpose of these sort of like post series ending, you know, short story collections, whatever, is to just like spend a little bit more time with your character characters that you know and love and like the thing about Hilo is that like I don't love Hilo like if Hilo was a real person I would absolutely hate his guts like he's just a misogynistic pig and I just like don't want to revisit his brain in any way you know what I'm saying and like he really grew on me by the end of the series but like revisiting like young Hilo not a vibe not a vibe and so like I don't think it was like a bad story or anything it was just like not the kind of fan service that I personally needed. And I do think that these sort of like short story collections, they really are just like fan service. And so like, I really didn't need the Hilo story. I will say, obviously, unsurprisingly, my favorite story is the Ait Mata one. I just, I love her. I am once again begging, begging Fonda Lee to give me a full length novel from Ait Mata's perspective. That's all I want in my life, you know? Anyway, I really like that one. And then there was... Shay's story, which I also really like because Shay is one of my favorite characters. And then there was also Lon's story, and I just, I loved that one. I really liked that one. I think that possibly my ranking in terms of like how much I liked them would definitely be Ait Mata at the top. And then I think Lon, and then Shay, and then Hilo's at the bottom because again, I just. I just don't care for Hilo like that. <laughs> I'm so sorry to everyone who loves him. Um, but yeah, anyway, that was four out of five stars. I really enjoyed that. But aside from that, actually, I have started and also gotten 60% of the way through Doppelganger by Naomi Klein. Um, one of the rare nonfictions that I will read. Um, but Naomi Klein is an interesting uh, person to me. I've read The Shock Doctrine almost... 10 years ago now disgusting how time flies but that was like my intro to Naomi Klein um when I was an undergrad my undergrad thesis I originally wanted to write on human rights and capitalism and if you've read the shock doctrine the like very short unnuanced summary of it is that it's about disaster capitalism and how people capitalize on um like disasters in order to like profit off them um that's kind of like the the main kind of topic of the shock doctrine. So I read that in college, but honestly, I don't remember much about it other than I really liked it. Like, I feel like Naomi Klein is one of those writers. I put Naomi Klein up there with like Roxanne Gay for me, maybe because I discovered them and like read them at around the same time, like during my university years. And that's when I found them at initially. And I've kind of like kept up with their works over the year. Roxanne Gay more so than Naomi Klein, though I do own this changes everything and I still haven't read it, but they're both writers that I feel like, even if I don't necessarily like agree with the point that they're making, they always write in a way that makes me think and that makes me like, I don't know, like it just, it's very thought provoking for me, even if I don't necessarily end up coming to the same conclusion that they make, I still enjoy the process of reading their works. I do find in general between the shock doctrine and this book right now, um, is that Naomi Klein is a little wordy for me. Um, she, her books could be a little shorter. I will say that. That being said, I am really enjoying Doppelganger. Doppelganger, I'm trying to like think of how to explain the premise. Basically, it's like part memoir in the sense that like she over the last like few years, um, has really gotten caught up in this like situation where she gets mistaken for someone called Naomi Wolf, who I don't know, but apparently is like a former, you know, like white liberal feminist turned like far right, um, anti-vaxxer, all that kind of stuff. Like, I don't really know who she is. So like, it's very hard for me to contextualize like this other Naomi person, but the book is like partly her own story of like how it is like so uncanny and weird to be like, um, mixed up with this person. And there's also like really weird, like uncanny similarities between the other Naomi's like husband and her partner. And it's just like very weird. Like it's just like kind of odd, you know? Um, and so that's where the name doppelganger comes from. But the whole point of the book really is to kind of cover, I don't know, like it's, I don't think that this book has like a concise enough of a thesis. Like I do think it's a little all over the place, partly because I do think that she's trying not to like tie it back into this like doppelganger story, but like it doesn't 
necessarily work for me. But I do enjoy like the meat of this book, um, which is that there's this discussion around like what she calls the mirror world. And the way that I would describe it and the way that I understand it to be is like, you know, when you meet someone who is just so vastly different worldviews from you that you're like, do you live in like an alternate dimension? And like, that's kind of how I think of what she describes as the mirror world. Um, and it's also like specifically about this thing that she talks about, which she relates to like this other Naomi a lot, is this theory called diagonalism. And it's like this idea that like um, people who were on the left, oftentimes because we live in a society, are still left out by the left. And how the far right, in her book, she focuses very specifically on um, is his name Steve Bannon? Steve Bannon, I think. Trump's like campaign manager guy. And she f focuses specifically on him and how good he is at doing this. Um, but in general, there are people on like the far right who recognize these like gaps in the left and they basically like prey on those, not prey, that's a bad word, but like they basically target those people that they can identify have been left out of the conversation by the general like left so to speak like the mainstream left and kind of like bring them over to the far right and that's why you will see so many people and it is true especially i would say like in north america and again i can only really speak to north america because that's like the society that i reside in um but you often see people who like live in either extremes like they're either like far left or like once they start veering they start veering way far into like conspiracy theory far right situation you see a lot of people who kind of like make that shift and she talks about how covid in the last couple of years have really changed that and have really like made that shift more apparent and that's what she calls diagonalism like people don't really like sit in the center anymore they just go straight there i think that the book in general is just like a really interesting look and like recap almost of the last couple of years politically and how that has affected us as a society. Um, I do think it's like very American and Canadian centric, but she does talk about like other world issues as well. Like she always does. She always in her works like does incorporate like a quite a global worldview. Um, but I would say like the crux of her argument, um, especially because it surrounds specifically these two people, right? Steve Bannon and the other Naomi. And so like because of that, and because these two people are both very American, um, the, the narrative of the book, I would say, is, like, very American-centric. Um, so that's, like, my main critique of it. But, like, it's very interesting. Like I said, Naomi Klein is one of those people, similarly to Roxane Gay, that I just, like, find very thought-provoking. Like, that's the only way I can describe her writing to me. Like, it tickles my brain in a way that makes me want to read more and that makes me want to think and, like, reevaluate my worldview in a, in a way. I'm enjoying the book. Um, I will probably finish it today or tomorrow. Anyway, that is it for this check-in and I will see you at the next one. Hello friends! It is Friday again and I once again haven't read much but I did finish Doppelganger by Naomi Klein. Um, I didn't rate it in the end. Uh, I don't tend to rate non-fictions. Um, I typically just like to think of it as a would I recommend this book or would I not and I definitely recommend it. I think that it is not as good as I remember the shock doctrine being but then again I was also like 20 or like 21 when I read the shock doctrine and I'm obviously not that now and so like I don't know maybe I need to reread the shock doctrine and see how I feel about it. I definitely didn't feel like it was as like life-changing to me at this point in my life as the shock doctrine was when I was like 20 years old. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I definitely still recommend it. I think it is a good book. I think for me where it falls apart is that I do kind of wish that it was just a collection of essays. I don't think that some of the points that she was talking about, while I think that they are important topics to talk about, um, I just don't feel like they tie back to her like central thesis of like the mirror world and the doppelganger thing very well. For example, she talks about the genocide in Palestine Palestine. Um, and I don't understand why she tried to tie it back, to be quite honest, to this whole like doppelganger thing, because I just don't think it worked in that way. Um, but I could tell that she just like really wanted to talk about this. Um, so obviously, like, I can't fault her for wanting to talk about like an important issue, especially now. Obviously, this book will not contain what's been happening since like October 7th or whatnot. But obviously, I think it's important and it's good that she wanted to discuss this, um, as she has in a lot of her books in the past. But it's good that she wanted to talk about this. I just don't know if it necessarily worked in terms of 
this like thesis that she has going on you know what I'm saying and I kind of just wish again that this book was like more of a series of essays that are not necessarily related so that she really could just talk about the topics that she wanted to talk about without having to arbitrarily try to tie them back into this like mirror world thing um I do think that the first half of the book was stronger than the second half specifically because I do think the arguments she was making the the, the examples that she was using in the first half of the book actually like make more sense in re in relation to this like thesis that she's you know proposing whereas in the second half it really just kind of falls apart a little bit um but all in all I really recommend it I personally enjoyed it I like I said before like Naomi Klein is one of those people that just like tickles my brain in a way that like makes me want to think makes me want to read more um and I do enjoy her writing quite a lot and then after that I didn't read too much but then last night just before bed I decided to start The Privilege of the Sword um I randomly just like wanted to read this um this is the second book in the what is this series even called I don't know but the first book is Swords Point which I read last year it came out in the 80s and it is like the most ridiculously pointless and petty bisexual fantasy drama ever and can I even call it fantasy like it is fantasy in the sense that it takes place in a secondary world but there's not really like magic per se um but the first book is like I describe it as like Jane Austen-esque but like with swashbuckling antics but it's like all about like rich petty people drama and like I just really enjoyed it nothing really happens in that book but I just had a really good time with it and like I said it is just like the definition of like everyone's a little bit bi everyone's a little chaotic I'm kind of into the chaos um and so I just really liked book one book two is quite different so far I'm only 40 pages into it but so far it's different in that most of the book not all of it but most of it is written from first person POV and it's from the main character Catherine's POV and she is the niece of a character that we know from book one and it almost reads more like a YA story in the sense that like it's definitely feeling like a coming of age story which to me is like a very quintessential like younger YA-ish fantasy trope. Of what I know of this main character the reason why I'm enjoying this so much and that it is so hilarious to me is that you have this girl who just wants to be brought into high society she wants to find a husband like she just wants to be a girl of the time you know what I'm saying um but she is now being forced to take sword fighting lessons and so she is literally like found herself in this like not like other girls trope but like all she wants to do is to wear dresses and go to parties and it's actually like quite funny to me like this setup and I'm really excited to see where it goes I think she's a really interesting character like a little annoying but I think with like coming of age stories I think it's okay for them to be annoying as long as there's like a good character arc and some character growth um but yeah that's what I've been reading I will check in maybe when I have like more updates I don't know anyway today's plan is to just get through the work day and then I'm gonna relax a little bit and I think I'm gonna do like a late dinner kind of situation I am just craving bumbohe and I just really want it I just I have been craving it like nobody's business and all I want to do is eat it so I'm gonna go um, and I'm going to take myself out for dinner do a little solo dinner situation because I don't have any friends um, but I'm gonna get my bumbohe um, anyway that is it for this check-in and I will see you at the next one Good morning friends. It is Monday. Not a happy one, but it is a Monday. And I'm just going to end the vlog here. I haven't really gotten much reading done since I last checked in. Honestly, because it's been a bit of a shit show around here. Basically, here's story time. Story time with me. Basically, I discovered like at 2 a.m. on Saturday night, so like Sunday morning, that my sink was leaking. My kitchen sink was leaking underneath and it was not leaking where it normally would leak and it was leaking behind basically the way that my cabinet works is like there's it doesn't go all the way to the wall and that's like where the piping goes but there's like almost like a half quarter slash quarter backing to the cabinet so there is a back to the cabinet but like it doesn't go all the way to the back but I can like reach in anyway point is it was leaking behind where I could like easily see and so I was like really stressed out and one of my biggest fears that like fuels my anxiety like one of the irrational things that I fear about is like mold in places that I can't see and in general mold is like a huge fear of mine anyway all that aside my worst nightmare is like literally coming true in this moment and so like I can't see anything I'm trying to take pictures and I can't see anything so I reach my hand back to like 
just to just to feel if there is like a puddle of water in the back and I find a random pair of pants. They are not my pants and they are not like sitting there being used as like a rag either. So it's not like the previous tenants of this apartment used it as a rag to clean up. They were like folded into like a baggie and then stashed away behind the cabinet. And now I'm like, what the fuck were in these pants that they had to be stashed away like this? It's very suspicious, very suspicious. Anyway, now they are in the dumpster. So there was that. And then like, because my anxiety was like all time high at like two, 3 a.m., I didn't sleep the whole night. <laughs> I think I got like two hours of sleep. Anyway, um, I did get someone to come fix it. Um, praise bless, God bless my parents who are on vacation right now and still helping me deal with this shit because I don't know what to do and I am like, the worst adult when it comes to home things like this. So I like just texted my dad and I was like, send help. Point is they called their contractor who's actually like currently doing some work on their house while they're away. And so he came over to my place yesterday to fix my sink. And basically I don't know what happened, but my faucet like broke. And so it started leaking from like the actual faucet. And so I had to go buy a new faucet and replace the entire thing. Anyway, it was a fucking shit show. Um, and so that has been story time with me. And that's why I haven't really been reading much. I've just been like playing on my Switch and watching Chicago Med. It's not good. Chicago Med is not good. I only started Chicago Med, if you know anything about me, is that I like to fuel my anxiety with like more anxiety. And I have a lot of health anxiety. And for some reason, I decide that like the way to do this in an almost kind of like exposure therapy situation i like to watch like medical dramas anyway i've run out of Grey's anatomy episodes to watch i've run out of like literally everything else that i have access to um and so i started chicago med and it's really bad it's not good and yet i am halfway through season two um anyway so that's all i've been doing i have not been reading like at all i really thought that this vlog was going to be my comeback and i don't feel as though i've made a very resounding successful comeback but if you made it all the way to the end um as always i super super appreciate it i can't promise like any regular content for the end of the year right now because like the end of the year is just like looking to be quite hectic for me right now um but i am hoping to to do like my quote unquote end of year content in January. So hopefully, hopefully I will have stuff then. But yeah, anyway, that is it for today. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below. If you cannot think of anything, give me a coffee emoji because like I just made a really good ice white mocha and I'm just, I'm very pleased with myself. And if you like this video and you wanna see more from me, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time.